Hi folks, Matt Easton here of Scholo Gladiatoria. So I want to talk very briefly about the famous Sword and Buckler treaties, which is actually the earliest European treaties we have uh, so far known in, um, in our kind of European martial arts heritage, um, uh, known as, I will call it, I-33. And um, this is also sometimes known as the Tower Fecht book, uh, Fecht book just being German for fight book, why they call it Tower Fecht book when they could just call it Tower Fighting Manual uh, or Fighting Book. I don't know. Um, but essentially it is a treatise, a treatise of um, sword and buckler use that was written sometime around 1300. Um, people's estimations of the dating of it vary from between about 1280 until about 1320. My inclination is that it's probably after 1300 rather than before 1300, but it doesn't matter a huge amount. It's about 1300 in date, and it's, um, that makes it nearly 100 years earlier um, than all of the other fencing treatises we have available to us. So-called Dobringer, um, which is probably not written by um, someone called Dobringer, um, was um, supposedly made, created in 1389, and it's the first treatise that talks about the Lichtenauer lineage um, in Germany, and, um, and the earliest Italian treatise that we know of are the uh, various versions of Fiore de Liberis, um, Fior di Battaglia, also known as Flos Diolatorum, which is the system that um, I essentially teach. Um, so we've got the Italian and German material, sort of knightly material as it's sometimes described, because it shows or describes the use of knightly weapons, so the long sword, the dagger, the spear, the poleaxe, these weapons, um, in armour and out of armour. Uh, and in the case of Fiore, on, horse, uh, on horseback and on foot. But um, I-33, or Tower, the Tower Fecht book, is somewhat different from that in that it shows um, many, many sequences of techniques that are, um, for the most part, really quite uh, complex and advanced um, stuff. It's not, it's not simpler because it's earlier or anything like that. It's a very evolved system of sword and buckler fencing. Um, but it's shown between a scholar, in other words a student, um, doesn't necessarily mean like a high school student, it could just mean a student of the fencing master, um, between a scholar and a priest. Um, and the priest, as was often the case in the medieval period, could indeed have been a soldier uh, earlier in his life. And there's another character shown in, in that treatise as well, who's called Walpurgis, um, who is a female, um, a, a woman, a girl. And um, this is, of course, very notable because there aren't very many women shown in medieval uh, treatises, and, and of course it, it's an example of a, a very early woman fencer. There's some debate about whether it really represents a real person, a real girl student called uh, Valpurgis, or whether it's actually um, a sort of... Uh, represents the saint, um, the, the woman saint Walpurgis, and, and actually her um, kind of using her as a, a sort of an almost a patron of the art or something. Um, but I won't get into that because I don't know the nitty gritty about it, um, and I don't know what the latest kind of research and, and, and um, arguments are on that subject. But what I do want to say, and so this is a long way of coming around to it, is that I call it I 33, and this is what the majority of people used to call it in historical fencing um, and in HEMA when I was first starting out in the late 90s um, and most people knew it as I-33 or the Tower Fecht book. In recent years there's been a mini crusade amongst some people to go, ah, it's not I-33, I think you'll find it's 133. Um, and in a sense they're correct because it, this is all this number means, it's not that this is written anywhere on the original treatise, we don't know if the treatise actually had a name originally, it's not mentioned anywhere, it's essentially unknown, uh, unnamed and anonymous, um, but it's a catalogue number, that's all it is, it's basically just like a shelf number, okay, it's just a catalogue number for um, this manuscript in the collection of the Royal Armouries, um, and hence the Tower Fet Fet book. that's the Tower as in the Tower of London. It's not incidentally an English treatise, I should have mentioned earlier, it's actually probably Southern German, and it has text in it that's, um, some text that's German, some text that's written in Latin. Um, and um, so all it is, all I-33 or 133 is, is a catalogue number, and yet some people get really really pedantic and anal about whether you call it I-33 or 133. 
I personally don't care what you call it. It doesn't change anything about the treatise. It's not an original name. It's just a catalogue number, guys. Get, get a grip. Okay, that's the first thing. But secondly, I get a little bit indignant because if someone's going to be really anal about it, first of all, it's a Roman numeral, I, and then two Arabic numerals, three and three. Okay? So how I choose to call a Roman numeral, I could call a Roman numeral the, the letter I, I could refer to it in English, in modern English as one, or I could refer to it as I. It's, it's, not, it's not unusual when you're citing Roman numerals to say IVX or whatever, or um, XV for 15. Um, you don't always just say, um, you know, you, do, you sometimes say what you see rather than necessarily what the number equals. Yes, we know that the, the Roman, Roman number 20 would be XX or the Roman number 5 would be V. And so we would say XX or V if we're reading it out. So it's completely normal to say I33. Um, you're, not, you're not looking clever by going, ah, 133, because I know the letter I means 1. Well, yeah, we all do, okay? Um, so that's the first thing. But secondly, if you're going to be really anal about it, what about the decimal point? Uh, you're just ignoring that. You're going, ah, but the I is a number 1. But we're going to ignore the decimal point. If you want to be really anal, go full anal. That sounds bad. <laughs> okay, no, but, okay, I'll if you want to be a massive pedant, if you want to be pedantic, then why not say the whole thing, it is 1.33, okay? Why go, ah, it's uh, 1.33, well, uh, technically, you, can, you may as well say then it's 1.33, or 1.33, why miss out the point? So, uh, to cut a long story short, this is not um, a big video about the treatise I-33, which is what I'll call it. Damn you all to hell. Um, and, and, you know, at some point I will do a video um, with my, one of my good buddies, such as Scott Brown or Dave Rawlings or Frank Sinato, one of these other guys who are really leaders on that treatise. And there's lots of you out there, oh, Roland Volchecker as well, there's lots of people who um, have really devoted a huge amount of time and, um, and Herbert Schmidt as well, should, shouldn't forget that. There's, a, there's a, a big number of people who've studied that treatise really deeply and I haven't. A man, it is not an easy treatise to work with. Fiore, in contrast, Fiore, easy. Okay, Fiore, 90% of the techniques in Fiore everybody agrees about because they're simple. Okay, it's only the details that people disagree about. Um, I-33 is more complex and the interpretation of it is far more difficult. Hands up, I admit that. So the guys that, that like Dave Rawlings and Herbert and Roland and, and Scott Brown and all of these people who've led the research on I-33, they all have differing interpretations and they agree on some points and disagree on some points. But it's a really complex um, uh, treatise to work with. Although some of those guys will go, no, it's really simple to work with. but their interpretations sometimes quite drastically differ from other people, which to me suggests it's actually not that simple, it's quite complex. But anyway, um, so I'm not going to talk about the treatise itself. I will get one of those guys to talk about it at some point in a future video. But just to say, don't be a massive pedant about the name of the treatise. First of all, it doesn't matter. Secondly, it's a catalogue number, it's not the actual name of the original treatise. And thirdly, if you're going to be a pedant, go full pedant, don't go full anal, I'm sorry, but go full pedant and don't ignore the decimal point. Okay, cheers folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.